our world has changed. We have changed. Our dynamics, interactions have all changed. But there's still a few things that haven't changed. Some things that some of us think that we should be doing and we're still living off old rules, old disciplines, old traditions and concepts of human interaction, of networking and of building relationships. The world moves so quickly nowadays. We quickly check in on Facebook. We quickly catch up with friends or family. We quickly grab someone in the lift. We quickly grab a coffee with a colleague. We're moving fast. We're communicating fast. Now, I'm not actually sure if we've caught up to how fast we're moving or even know how to deal with everyone moving so quickly. Because we want our information quickly, efficiently, instantly. Sometimes we even want that to hear that best message ever, but in under 18 minutes. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> so like I said, I'm not sure if we've quite adjusted ourselves to the way that we're living now and dealing with everyone else moving so fast. Sure, we've gotten used to getting a message across in 140 characters, thanks to a little blue bird. But outside of that interaction online, our actual face-to-face -face interactions are not as effective in our new world. So I want to talk about how we can maybe shift the way we're connecting and how we might be able to do it. And I think to do that, we need to first understand where we've come from, where we are now, before we decide where we want to go. And are we doing this consciously? Or are we just moving with the trends? Are we just going with the flow of wherever the next big thing online is? Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you to slow down, sit down, calm down, put that iPad down. Because <laughs> to be honest, most just won't, and nor will the world around you. But we can still be masters of human interaction and of connecting again. I go to so many events where there are amazing opportunities for people to connect and network. However, time and time again, I see people slink in the door and grab their phones, start typing away as if to say, oh, I am networking. I have friends. They're just all on here, so I'm too busy to talk to you, sorry. And we're allowing this to happen. And it's not just the younger generations displaying this behaviour either. So I think what we need to start doing is looking up from our phones looking up from our social media accounts and start looking up and to each other. I know it's a crazy old school concept and you're probably already tweeting away saying, who is this girl? She's crazy. <laughs> retweet, retweet. <laughs> and that's okay. I also want you to know that I'm not going to stand here and give you the TED talk my mother would give about how she believes the world is now, that everyone lives on their phone and no one knows how to just talk to each other anymore because that is not entirely true either. We just may not have entirely developed it to this new way that we live now. The world is how it is, and don't get me wrong, I love how much the world is concentrating on communication now, and I love a text and a tweet just as much as the next person. But what I'm talking about is how we can be effective when we have to come face to face, because that is the art that is dying. Also, some of us have relationships online we would never have in real life. Say, for instance, on Facebook, we might be friends with people from school who we congratulate when they get married, say, how cute, on their baby photos, but see them in the street and we cross the road because we actually don't want to have to talk to them. Online activities are also leading some of us to be a little lazy when we meet people new. I went to my best friend's birthday party a few weeks ago and I was introduced to a few people I'd never met before. Now I'm always very excited to meet new people and hear their stories, but each time I was blocked with something along the lines of, oh yeah, you're Danielle, I've seen you on Facebook. So I liked your latest segment on TV this week and oh, your cat is so cute. Now remember, I don't know these people, nor am I friends with them on or offline. So I secretly pulled out my phone and whispered into it, Suri, tighten my Facebook privacy settings. <laughs> the fact that this information is available for us to uh, see means that we're cutting out the intrigue. And sometimes we're cutting out the discovery when we first meet people. 
Now, when you don't have that initial journey of finding out about each other, when you don't have the shared stories, the, the conversations about the serendipities of your paths crossing, your mutual friends, the shared attention and excitement when someone is right in front of you, even the stir of chemicals and hormones that get released when you're interacting with people face to face. Now, when you don't have all that, then our relationships aren't being built in the way that they're meant to, on an emotional or a physical level, and trust and rapport aren't being built. In, definitely not in the way that we understand it. Yes, we have all this information online for us already, but it does not allow us to truly take shortcuts when we communicate with others. Just because you may have seen on someone's Facebook status update that their grandfather went into surgery does not allow you, when you first meet them, to jump straight into, it's great to finally meet you in person. So did your pop survive? It just doesn't work that way. There is no replacement for face-to-face -face interaction when building trust and rapport as we know it. And just because we have all this information sometimes does not allow our conversations to take off from where their Facebook wall of information has left you. So what can we do? We know we aren't all gonna slow down. We know we aren't all gonna go throw our devices in the river. So then we have to develop we have to step up and we need to make sure that we're creating relationships in the way that they're meant to be formed. And technology can help us with that. It just shouldn't be the only way we connect so comfortably. We need a new way. There are amazing books and philosophies throughout history that have helped shape our community. Uh, two people who have greatly influenced me are Dale Carnegie and Stephen Covey, but there are many other transformative minds that have definitely helped shape the way that we understand interaction, how to connect with people, how to understand other people and of course ourselves. And at the same time that I respect these people, we also need to take a moment to understand the time that they were written in. Dale Carnegie's incredible book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which I do truly adore, was first published in 1936. The world was a very different place. Sure, the principles in this book are incredible and still do have a lot of relevance in how we should be interacting. However, so many aspects of how we do interact have changed because it was 35 years until the first email was sent since the book was first published. However, it was still another 20 years on top of that until everyone sort of wholly embraced it. Now when Mr Carnegie sadly passed away in 1955, the cool technology that they saw in that year was that Coca-Cola was now being sold in cans and not just bottles and Velcro was invented. Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People was a little closer to our time and first published in 1989 yet it was still three years until the first text message was sent. LinkedIn wasn't launched till 2003, Facebook in 2004, and our Bluebird Twitter didn't fly into our world until 2006. That is 17 years after Mr. Covey first published his Seven Habits Words of Wisdom. But really think about how most of us use text, tweets, Facebook, LinkedIn, how much we interact over the internet, emails, and how much it has changed the way most of us live our lives. Now again, I'm not taking anything away from what these amazing thinkers gave us. I'm merely making the point of how much the world has changed and will continue to change. Our society has been shaped by so many of these philosophies and rightly so, but we need to make sure that we're incorporating that and incorporate it into this world, our changing world. Now we seem to have two methods to build our relationships, face-to-face, -face, on online. And again, I'm just not sure if we're using both of these methods effectively. From what I see, we seem to be more comfortable connecting online than going through the possible uncomfortable feelings that we go through when we first meet someone new. However, do we know how to build relationships online? Are we still in the teething stage? We know how to build relationships when we come face to face and when we're interacting in person. We can see the growth right in front of us. When we move from a handshake to a hug, from a hug to a kiss on the cheek, 
or even from a polite introductory smile until a genuine glistening smile of love. We can see that growth. Can we see that growth and build it online? Do we understand what that looks like yet? Is it when we're comfortable to put a smiley face in an email? Or maybe a cheeky sign off? There just doesn't seem to be that same clear steps of building relationships online. No clear distinction and possibly that is where misread comments, misunderstandings and disagreements are happening. Yes, we have more content online than ever before, but do we have the same level of understanding? That is where I believe we're getting into trouble. And if we continue, we may not be able to adapt to this new way that we're connecting now. What if we just use networking technology that we have now and see what we can do with it? I feel we may be developing our technology before we get used to what we had, and that means that we're not creating any clear definition. We're not creating any boundaries or clear sort of way forward that we understand how to build relationships online because the options are moving so quickly. The place to meet is constantly being moved. If life online continues the way it is, then I ask you, what is the ripple effect? How will our children or their children build relationships because what we are creating now? How will we be able to teach our children how to make friends if the ripple effect is that we just continue to press a connect button? Let me make this really clear. It should not just be one or the other. The two need to merge, but not one overtake the other unconsciously. This is why it needs to be a really conscious thought about where we're going, understanding where we come from, understanding what we understand, and say, us as a society, this is where we're going. Now, technology has allowed many of us to have a network that is much wider and international than we could ever imagine before using these online technologies. But just because we can tweet, email, or even pin someone should not mean that we will replace the magic of discovery when two people are standing together. The emotions and connectivity that happens when someone is right in front of you. This is why a new way must be made. Us, as a society, must pave that new path. Now my final ask is that we don't try to replace that moment where two people come together with something digitally. Because that moment has a power that no app can reproduce. So we need to give in to that first moment. That first moment of discovery, that first smile, that first hug, or even that first kiss. That first moment of intrigue so we can go on and flourish together. That moment is really so powerful, even if it's a little scary, it's worth protecting. For us and for future generations, it's worth protecting. Thank you.